Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. This week on Test Drive, we look at the 1995 Mazda Millennia. Now, this vehicle was supposed to be the entry level Amati. Fortunately, when Mazda decided to dump the Amati nameplate, they kept the Millennia in the lineup. Without question, the highlight of the new Millennia is the engine adopted for use in the S model. It's called a Miller Cycle engine. The Miller Cycle was originally designed for stationary engines that ran on diesel. Mazda have adapted this technology for use with gasoline. This engine differs from a conventional engine in two important ways. By delaying the closing of the intake valve, you effectively reduce the compression ratio without affecting the amount of power produced. Combine this with a lithium compressor, aka a supercharger, and you end up with the same amount of power as an engine one and a half times the size without sacrificing fuel economy. During the test, we averaged a commendable 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers, or 28.5 miles per gallon. Well, that's the theory. Does it work in practice? The answer is very effectively so. And it goes down to the intercoolers they've hooked up to the supercharger. And these things are fed cool air through some very effective ducts. The upshot of the whole thing, 210 horsepower and 210 pounds-feet of torque. During the acceleration test, the Millennia ran to the 100k mark in about eight seconds. The only transmission available is a four-speed automatic that incorporates Mazda's overly complicated hold system. Why they can't go to a straightforward on-off button for the overdrive totally baffles me. The suspension on the Millennia is comprised of a multi-link design both front and rear. This gives the car a very comfortable, compliant ride. The beauty of the multi-link setup in the rear is that it imparts a small amount of toe-in during cornering. This gives the car a very stable, reassuring feel. Given the very sophisticated suspension on this Millennia, I was expecting it to whiz through the pylon test. Unfortunately, it didn't because it has a limiting factor. And the factor is not body roll, it's not understeer, it's the fact that the steering wheel locks mid-transition. In reality, you shouldn't run into that too much, but in the event of a severe evasive maneuver, you could find yourself in trouble. Standard on all Millennias is a four-sensor three-channel anti-lock brake system. During the brake test, we required just 115 feet to stop from 80K. Tied in with the ABS is a sophisticated traction control system. When the system detects wheel spin, it begins to eliminate it by retarding the ignition timing and cutting off the fuel flow to the injectors. Stopping wheel spin in this manner results in a very drivable unit that does not wear the brakes out prematurely. When I road tested the 929, one of my pet peeves was the size of the trunk and the fact there was no fold down rear seat. On the Millennia, they've addressed the size of the trunk. It's now very usable. However, there is still no fold down rear seat or even a ski pass through. On today's cars, that's unacceptable. Inside, the Millennia is loaded. There's the usual complement of comfort and convenience items, including power windows, locks, mirrors, steering wheel mounted cruise control buttons, as well as the obligatory dual airbags. The audio and climate controls are among the best in the industry. Both feature large controls that are exceptionally easy to use. The dash follows the same thing. The dials are large and easy to read. The power eight-way seats provide plenty of comfort and support. Combine these with the power tilt steering and finding the right driving position is very easy. The roomy rear environment features three-point seat belts for both outboard passengers as well as a center armrest. Dotted throughout the interior are numerous storage bins as well as aircraft-style map pockets. The other item worthy of note is the remote control it features a panic button. All in all, the layout has been very well thought through and executed. That's it for this week's test drive. I think it's safe to say that Mazda have done a super job with the Millennia. So much so that I think it sounds the death knell for the 929. Now, while Mazda insists the demographics of the buyer for the 929 and Millennia are vastly different, I beg to differ. This car runs rings around the 929, meaning we could see the end of it.